Family Kingdom family, what's up? Hey everybody. I am so grateful and so excited to be here with you. This is Justin Michael Williams and welcome to the kingdom. We are in for a very special session today on the power of feeling your dreams. The power of feeling your dreams. And this is a teaching that we're gonna deepen and take to the next level today because I know many of you have heard the concept that we're gonna cover today, which is really giving you a key to manifesting the dream that you have for your life. But a lot of people get really confused about this concept and there's a lot of misconceptions about this concept. And so today we are gonna practice giving you the opportunity to feel, feel your dreams. And we're gonna do this together because this is the key to finally being able to step forward into it and also knowing when your dream shows up in your life because you're not confused by what it looks like. You're anchored into how it feels. And so in this moment, I wanna welcome you. And if this is your first time ever coming to the kingdom, I want you to type first time into the chat box. So just type the words first time if it's your first time and you're gonna see our entire community is gonna welcome you here with big, wide, open arms. And wherever, or if, if this is not your first time, even if you've been here before, I want you to uh, type where you're coming in from. And I see you all. Hi, Mom. Hi, Shari. Hi, Mary Teresa. Karina, Eric. It's good to see you, Eric. Rita, Kathy, Cheryl, Barbie, Alan. Always good to see you here. Hello, everybody. Renee, Magdalena, James, Devin, Kalani. Oh, I see you are. Earth Angels, I love your name here today. Camille, Raylene, Luis, everybody, hello. I just want you to know that I see you. And Maria, welcome for your first time. And anybody else's first time it is, uh, we can, you can just type it into the chat box. And uh, so grateful, so, so, so grateful to be here with you all. Hello, Andrea, or Andrea, or and Andrea. So you'll see that we're a family here. <clears throat> so here at the kingdom, we do a few special things. We start each moment with some form of music or song or art or sometimes poetry to just anchor us into our hearts because the music and the art is a part of what anchors some of the teachings down into our hearts. And so this is why we wanna unlock and open the heart so that the teachings can fully land inside. And then we go straight into a teaching, sometimes with me, sometimes with a special guest. We take action and we learn how to bring these teachings directly into our lives so you're not just leaving here inspired, you're leaving here with wisdom that you can actually use. So, let us begin this morning with our prayer. So just take a moment and place your hands over the center of your chest. Here at the kingdom, we just place one palm over the other and make sure your hands are not over your neck covering your throat and that they're not too tight, just tenderly right over the center of your chest. And take a full deep breath in and a full breath out. One more time, a full deep breath in and a full breath out. God, spirit, universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be by every name you go by, past, present, and future, and every name you will go by, we call on you to help remind us of our power, to help remind us that our dreams are within our reach as long as we continue to walk forward toward them powerfully. And even when it feels like we're taking steps backwards or in the wrong direction, may you remind us and help us see that we are never off track, that we are always walking in the direction of our dreams and we are learning lessons the whole way through. We are learning lessons the whole way through. And so may we hear the lessons easily and quickly. May any stress or swirling 
that is happening in our minds or in our emotional fields or in our energy systems, just be cleared and calmed so that we can see and feel the lesson and learn it so that we don't have to repeat it again. May we each know that we are here for a divine purpose and that every time we step toward that purpose, we are making this world a better place. May each of us be protected and loved and know our worth and our value beyond just what we do. Thank you for bringing this community together for so many years now and welcome all the people who are here for the first time. May they feel the embrace of this community and come again and again to be recharged and refueled for the beautiful, dynamic, amazing, and sometimes even challenging journey ahead. I'm gonna be silent now for about 60 seconds, and this is your moment to welcome in your own personal prayer or your own intention that you're setting for this day or for the week to come. Go ahead and do that now. God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, please help us to let go of the things in our minds that are holding us back from our purpose, that are distracting us from what we're here to do. And let each of us step into the full power of who it is that we are. May we each hear the exact message that we came here to hear today. And may we listen generously with an open heart and an open mind so that the message that we are here for lands directly in our hearts and blossoms open to serve the benefit of our lives and to everyone that we touch and everyone that we may encounter. So it is, Ashe, Aho, Salam, Amen, Shalom, Satnam, Awen, Om, thank you, thank you. All right, Kingdom family. So, I have an exciting moment for us today and a surprise for you all before we begin. So, as you know, we always begin with uh, a song of some sort. Hello, Thomas. And today, you want to get your tissues ready. Uh, so, this coming week, well, I'll, I'll back up. So many of you know, some of you don't know, that uh, we released a song this past week in our community called Forever Yellow. And Forever Yellow is uh, an amazing song that we wrote with a community called the Yellow Heart Memorial. And Yellow Heart Memorial is a group of people globally all around the world. And what brings them together, it's like a club that nobody wants to be a part of, but that is filled with incredible love and and support is everybody in the Yellow Heart community lost a family member to COVID-19 over the last couple of years. And it's kids who lost their parents and people who lost their partners and brothers and sisters and spouses, just real people. And so it was really important to me when they came to me and asked me to write a song for their community, for this movement, that people's voices and hearts were included in the song. And so what we did is we actually brought their entire community together and their community wrote the song with me and with the brothers Corin and, uh, and Theo, you know, Theo Grace, who many of you know. And so we wrote the song, literally the words to the song were written as a collective. And if you even go on Spotify and like look at the credits, you can see all these writers listed. We got more writers in our thing than Beyonce, okay? And, uh, and so then one of the things that has happened is we started planning a music video. And in the music video, we invited people 
to share photos of the people that they love and that, that they lost or that are you know, gone on to the other plane. And I love you all putting the yellow hearts in the chat box. And so the surprise that I have for you today is just this morning, just 15 minutes before we came on, which is why I was a few minutes late starting. I mean, I'm always, I guess, I'm usually a few minutes late starting, but this is today, the reason I was a few minutes late starting is I just got the final draft of the video. So I thought I would give you all a surprise premiere here of the video today, uh, which is gonna be such a gift. It's not coming out until later this week. And so, but I think this family, you all are my family and what a gift to be able to watch it together and actually celebrate this moment with you because I just watched it alone and right in the moment we can uh, enjoy this video together. And so it is with my whole heart and a great gift that right now in this moment we premiere exclusively for our kingdom family the video for Forever Yellow. And my request to you is that you hold this in your heart and that you hold this community in your heart, people who lost someone to COVID-19. My grandmother is in the video, my Nana. And uh, you let whatever emotions that arise for you for this crack you open. Because whether you lost someone to COVID or not, we all have somebody who we wish you know, was still here with us. And so as the video is going, feel free to keep putting the yellow hearts in the chat box to just send this out uh, with love. And so without further ado, here is Forever Yellow. I miss you My heart is broken It's forever yellow I pray to see you When I close my eyes My heart keeps beating I'm forever yellow I need you here When my world is falling down Come help me breathe
So take a moment now and just feel it and be with whatever emotions arise. Be with whatever emotions arise. And just allow it. And we pause and we use the music <clears throat> as medicine. That's how we use music as medicine to give us access to parts of ourselves that are in there that sometimes need to be opened and expressed. And so I hope, I've, I hope you all love it. I'm very proud of this work that we've done. It's been, this has been a really meaningful project uh, for, for me and for everybody involved. And uh, hi, Anna. And so I, um, I hope anything that you are feeling here opens you up and yeah, calls you forward. And so you can feel how we drop into a little bit uh, of a deeper space together as soon as we bring the art in. It just connects us. I think we can feel ourselves deeply and we can feel each other. And so thank you all. Um, thank you all. And I know many of you have people, I see Barbie and my mom, and many of you have uh, people you love who are in this video. And so. I hope it's done you well. All right, everyone. So with keeping all of that in our hearts, you know, this is a practice for life. I wanna move into today's teaching and it was important that, I, uh, that we are feeling right now because today's teaching is about really feeling your dreams and using the power of your emotions to help you in the process of manifesting in a deep, and real and powerful way. Hey, Kate. <laughs> and um, today, I'm not, I normally have a bunch of slides. I'm not gonna use slides today because what's gonna be important about this practice today is we're gonna kind of go in and out and in and out of what I call inner listening practices, okay? Inner listening practices. And what inner listening practices do is exactly what it sounds like. It helps you listen within helps you listen to the message and the voice and the wisdom that is inside of yourself and so you can look at me as much as you need to or not but but really what we're going to do is focus our energy on listening to the messages that are inside of us and use the emotions that you might feel that arose from that song to just like you know kind of help take you deeper inside of inside of you now that you have that little crack you know that opens us in and so Let's start with grounding, just taking a real moment right now to ground our energy. And so what that looks like, when you hear people say this all the time, right? Like, okay, you need to ground your energy. And so grounding your energy, there can be many different things. It could even just be sitting outside on the ground. <clears throat> but what you can do right now, anywhere you are, is you just take a moment and just sit, like if you're already sitting, like just give yourself to gravity a little bit more. So you notice that sometimes we're kind of like really holding ourselves up. Just give yourself to gravity a little bit more and just ground yourself. And if your feet are on the floor, they don't have to be, you can be sitting anyway, but if your feet are on the ground, just feel the parts of your body that are touching the earth or touching your couch or touching a chair or touching the floor. Just feel the parts of your body that are actually touching there and bring your awareness to those spots. And now, Imagine, 
very simply, okay, imagine a ball of energy. It could be any color. So you can close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. A ball of energy just swirling in your pelvis, so like your lower belly. So kind of between your belly button and your booty, like, you know, right down at the bottom, like between your belly button and your sex organs there, just feel like a ball of energy spinning. And if you are having trouble imagining one, you can imagine a green ball today, a green shimmery ball. And if it's not green for you, don't worry. And then take that ball of energy, and if it's not clear to you, don't worry, you can just whatever kind of feeling or sense, even if it's fuzzy or you're like, I don't see it, it's, it's fine. Just imagine that ball of energy now sending a ray of light, a ray of light all the way down to the center of the earth. And so now there's like a tether, a tube, a line, a cord, going from right inside of your pelvis, from this ball of light, straight down, 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 even further down through the bedrock, all the way down into the molten center of the earth. And so you have this cord now connecting you. And you can even imagine yourself kind of like plucking this cord to make sure it's nice and tight and strong. And if you're efforting to do this, give up the effort. You don't have to try. Just let it be easy. Let it be easy. Let it be easy. Give it permission to just be easy. And whatever shows up for you is fine. And now keeping this grounding cord, place your hands over the center of your chest. Take a deep, full breath in and a breath out. And now inhale with me for one, two, three. Hold for one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Beautiful. We're going to do that again. Inhale, everybody, for one, two, three. Hold for one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Last time, inhale deeply. One, two, three. Hold for one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Now just breathe normally. and give yourself to gravity a little bit more. So this is called grounding. This is grounding. This is how you ground yourself. That only took us about three minutes, okay? And just notice how you feel, and then you can open your eyes, and I want everybody to type a couple words or a word, a few words into the chat box that describes how you feel now, how it felt grounding, whatever it is. It could be any emotion. It doesn't have to be it felt good. It could be anxious. It could be hard. It could be joyful. It could be clear. It could be tired. It could be restful. It could be happy or whatever it is. And as you type those into the chat box and you see what different people are experiencing as well, you'll notice that this is a varied experience for everybody depending on what we're going through in our lives. So I'm grounding us right now for a reason because of you know really uh, what we're going to be going through next in a moment and i see mary Teresa is feeling present cheryl is softer shana rooted lori hopeful karina safe and calm alan bless connected mt wanda inflated shari expanding sasha safe raylene content kathy calm Yatili, at peace. Daphne, rooted. Maria, relaxed. Kalani, nervous and excited. Luis, home. Anna, felt nice. Cree, aware. Andrea, nervous. Barbie, safe and calm. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl about the breath, Kialani, deeper, connected, Magdalena. Beautiful, everybody. Now, 
connected, connected and flowing. So I'm just, I'm just note, I'm just calling presencing this in here, okay? Just presencing it in. So the next thing that I want to teach you, because we're going to keep that grounding, we're going to keep that grounding cord. And the reason that I use the color green, many of you might be wondering, who are familiar why I'm using green, is because green is the color of our heart chakra. It's the color that is keeping everything that we're doing rooted in love, rooted in love. So you see that we're rooting and we're grounding in the energy and in the, in the color and the space of love, all right? And so this is our grounding practice. Now, this is a practice, just so you all know, that what we just did, that practice, what I do every morning, every morning, right before I meditate, that grounding practice is what comes, okay? So let me teach you the second piece of this, right? So step one, if y'all can put this in, MT, I know you'll scribe for us, is grounding, okay? That's the first step of this practice today. The second step of our interactive practice is setting up your prayer of protection, okay? Your prayer of protection. And I'm not expecting you all to remember this prayer. I'm gonna just do it with you, but you could even make up your own because you're in charge of your energy field just to protect your energy field because we're gonna get ready in a moment to go into your dream. And so we want to make sure that your energy field is protected. Okay, so you can close your eyes again if you feel comfortable. You can place your hands over the center of your chest if that's comfortable for you. If not, you can always just drop them down to your sides. Imagine that grounding cord going down again. It's down, 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 that green grounding cord. And now we will anchor into a prayer of protection. This is my favorite prayer of protection that I learned from Brenda Rose. Many of you have heard me mention Brenda before. She's a powerful member of our community and family and a big teacher for me. There would be no Justin Michael Williams as you know him without uh, Brenda Rose. So this is the practice for the prayer of protection. And you can repeat these words after me out loud if you'd like or even just in your mind and, and imagine it happening around you. I call upon a divine ray of love and protection and I draw a circle around me and my bodies and in this circle I place the white light of peace you can imagine a white light coming in the blue light of healing the clear red light of energy, the green light of love, and the purple light of protection. And I declare that nothing and no one shall come between me and my circle. So it is. Ashe, aho, salam, amen, satnam, awen, om. Thank you. You can add your ever at the end. And just keeping your eyes closed if they're closed. I want you to now just imagine at the end of your energy field, just imagine your energy field extending out as far as you feel it does. Don't worry about it being right or wrong. Just at the edge of your energy field, imagine placing a rose and surrounding yourself in an orb, like a big orb of rose petals. But there's one strong rose at the end of your field. And the re reason we do this is rose, at the edge of our field, the energy of rose, roses raise the vibration, they elevate the vibration. And so anything negative that tries to come into your field, it hits the rose before it comes to you. And it goes into the rose and gets called up to a higher elevation. So the rose is taking it. This is really important for people who are empathic or who are sensitive and take on other people's feelings. If you're Pisces like me. <laughs> and so now you have your rose at the edge of your field. You have your grounding cord. You're surrounded by these beautiful rose petals. You're here and you're ready. 
And so this is how we kind of clean up what Brenda calls our energetic hygiene. Okay, energetic hygiene. So take a moment and just feel yourself in this beautiful space. And then type a couple words into the chat box about how you feel now. And Mary Teresa, thank you for typing all that. I don't expect you to type the whole thing because I want you to have an experience. So don't feel like you have to scribe everything for us. But thank you for doing that. That was really sweet of you. Oh, Sandy, beautiful. <clears throat> all right, everybody. Yeah. So this is our setup, okay? This is your energetic setup to do the big work. And I have something that I need y'all to remember so that you, you can even just set a timer on your phone for tonight, like around the time that you go to bed. Try not to forget this. If you don't forget it, don't worry. You'll remember tomorrow or, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You can ask your guides to do it for you. But <clears throat> when you go to bed tonight, you will blow up the rose. You take the energy of the sun and you blow up the rose. And the reason why is this rose is taking in all the energy for the day. The rose, the rose petals is taking in all the energy that you don't need and doing its work. And, and you don't wanna hold on to that rose that has all that stuff in it all day and into the night and into your sleep. So all that I do is I just imagine the sun, like the sunlight and it just goes poof. And it just, like it just literally, this rose just blows up and explodes and just all this kind of shimmery, you know, rose powder kind of goes into the earth to get reused and repurposed as like fertile soil, as compost, rose compost, you know, for something later. So just try to remember, you can even use your phone right now and set a timer for yourself for later today that at some point later today, you blow the rose up so you don't hold on to it for tomorrow. And if you remember it tomorrow, if you remember it the next day, if you forget, don't worry. It'll all be it'll all be taken care of, okay? <clears throat> Especially because most of you didn't have roses in the first place before. So now if you have one for a little longer, it's not gonna be a big deal, okay? <laughs> so I hope you're liking this. We're doing an interactive kingdom session today, okay? You're doing an interactive kingdom session today. All right. <clears throat> so let us now talk about listening. So this is gonna be one of my two big teachings for you today. So listening, we, can, we, we all hear things, right? We hear things all day. Like right now there's a siren going on outside that I can hear. There's air conditioning here in this room. There's all different kinds of sounds going on. But there's a difference between listening and hearing. Because hearing is just happening all day. But what are you listening to what are you listening to I'm giggling at Barbie's comment here because we can all hear the same thing but be listening in a way that allows us to understand something differently this is how somebody can say something or even today I'm talking I'm saying the same thing you all are all hearing the same thing from me but you're comprehending and taking different things because of what you're listening to, because of the quality of your listening. And so there's a, com there's a concept called generous listening that I learned from a mentor of mine named Jim Selman. And instead of with generous listening, the question that you wanna ask yourself is, what are you listening for? We don't normally use this language. We normally say what we're listening to. I want you to ask yourself, what are you listening for? Everybody type that into the chat box. What am I listening for? And listening for and listening to are two very different things. And I'm teaching this, you can use this with anybody that you're even having a conversation with, but I want you to be paying attention when we go into this inner listening practice to understand what you're listening for inside of your own self. Okay, what are you listening for inside of your own self? And so listening for means, for example, you're having a conversation with somebody you love and they're telling you something difficult. 
Are you listening? What do you, if you ask, what are you listening for? Are you listening for the breakthrough to help them? Are you listening to just reconfirm their biases and their issues? Are you listening to an opening or for connection? So what are you listening for? I'm listening for connection. I'm listening for a breakthrough. I'm listening for opening. Most of us, when we're listening, we're just listening for ourselves. We're listening to reconfirm everything that we thought of in our own heads, right? Reconfirm our own biases. Are you listening for limitations? You know, sometimes I will have, you know, people will come speak to me about things, about problems going on in their lives, and I could be listening for their possibility. And what you'll hear in what they say is very different when you focus on what you're listening for. So somebody can come to you with all this drama, 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 drama. Oh my God, can you believe this happened and that happened and this happened, this happened. And when that happens to me, I go, okay, what am I listening for? And those of you who've seen me do shadow work with people, this is a part of it of what are you, I'm listening for something. I'm not listening to what they say because they could say a whole bunch of junk. I'm listening for something. And that what I'm listening for is gonna show me, ah, this is what's really happening. This is what they're really saying. And that's how somebody can come with all this drama and I go, oh, you're hurt. You're sad. You know, and then, ah, how did you know? It's because I'm listening for the truth. And so today, I want you to be, when we go into the practice, I want you to pay attention to what you're listening for. And in today's practice, I want us to listen internally for possibility. And you can choose other things to listen for, but to listen for possibility, okay? Now, I wanna go into the, the second, hold on, now I'm listening for something inside of myself. Okay, let's practice this. Let's practice this, okay? So go ahead, if you're comfortable closing your eyes again, you can close your eyes. If you wanna keep them open, you're always welcome to. Come back to that grounding cord. And for those of you who have this habit of making it really challenging to let these things come up in your energy field, just let it be easy. You don't have to effort. Whatever shows up is okay, even if it's not clear, if it's not fuzzy, if you can't see it clearly, whatever you're feeling, just let it be easy. Let it be okay, whatever shows up. So you have your grounding cord, green going down into the earth. If it's another color, that's fine. You have your rose at the end of your energy field. You're surrounded in your orb of petals. You are protected. And now bring and draw your awareness inward towards yourself. Just draw your energy in to you. And right now I want you, I'm gonna do a little practice with you and you'll see the power of listening for. So right now, I want you to listen for internally the pauses between your breaths. Listen for the pauses between your breaths. And now listen for some pain in your body. And now shift away from that and again, listen for the space between your breaths. Great. And now listen for possibility. Just see what comes up. 
when I say that. Listen for possibility. And now listen for anxiety. And now listen for a part of yourself that feels at ease. Listen for a part of your body that feels relaxed. And finally, listen for gratitude. And take a breath in and a breath out and open your eyes. So how was that for you all? Type some words in the chat box. So this is like, it's all happening. It's all always happening, right? There's always things, noise, things that we can tune our awareness and our attention to, but you can notice that all that was just happening in you. And I could have gone on and on and on for 20 minutes. There's so much that's happening, but we're not aware of it until we tune ourselves to listen for it. And so in your life, what are you listening for? It's a big, big hint, okay? Because what you're listening for is gonna dictate what you hear and what you choose to do, right? It's all there at the same time, the anxiety and the possibility, this comfort, the relaxation, the pauses, the breathing, all of it's there at the same time. Beautiful, Elmira, refreshing. All right? And so we can, in every conversation you have and everything you do, listening for is a big key. A big key. All right. So I want to take you into the next part of the teaching. Those of you who've been a part of my manifesting classes in the 40 days, you'll know this but I'm just really bringing it into a deep level for us today as we close out. So when we talk about manifesting, we talk about stepping forward toward our dreams. What we're doing is revealing to ourselves the direction that we wanna head in our lives. Okay, we get a direction, the direction that we wanna head in our lives. And so my invitation to you is we're gonna do a practice of visioning and we're gonna do it twice, okay? The first practice, we're just gonna focus on the vision itself. The second time we do the practice, we're gonna focus on how the vision feels. Now there's a reason for this and this is the big takeaway and many of you will know this, okay? Is the reason people end up not, one of the reasons, I will say, people end up not accomplishing their goals and their dreams is because the universe is dangling the dream in their face. And because they're only focused on what the vision looks like, but don't understand what the vision feels like, they don't recognize the vision when it's dangling in their face in a different package than the packaging that was in their minds. It's not about the packaging. You're not in life for the packaging. You're in life for the vision and what that vision is here to make you feel because you could be with and in the most beautiful packaging, the most beautiful house, the most beautiful job that's making you all the money you could ever dream of and be miserable. And trust me, I know it because these people come and work with me in our community. So how does the vision make you feel? And if you can anchor into how the vision makes you feel, then you will know when the vision shows up in your life. And you'll be able to say yes to it 
even when the packaging doesn't match whatever you thought of in your brain. Because the packaging, the packaging and whatever you visualize as the packaging is just there as a representation to help you get to the feeling. The vision board in your mind, you could just think of your image of your vision in your mind, is just there as a representation. The vision board that you have up in your room or in your house is just there as a representation to send you back into yourself to say, if this vision were to be true and I were to be standing in it, how would it feel? So an example that I like to give, and we're going to do both of these, an example that I like to give <clears throat> is with people who are trying to manifest a partner and manifest a job. Okay, these are two examples we get often inside of our community. Okay, so the way that this works is as follows. People will come and say, I'm manifesting a partner. I want to manifest this perfect partner and this person who's my soulmate and the person in my dreams. And that's beautiful because I believe in that. I believe that we all have that divine spark of connection that we're supposed to be connected into. And what happens is the, you have a vision in your mind of what this person's going to be like. And so you go, oh, I want somebody who goes to therapy. I want someone who's done their inner child work on themselves. I want someone who is in shape and active. I want someone who has a nice body. I want someone who takes good care of themselves. I want someone who, whatever it is, knows how to cook. I want someone who knows how to clean. I want someone blah, 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 blah. Okay, great. These are all great. These are all great. I want someone who can, I can go on trips with. These are all great. Okay. So you can allow those things to come, but you just remember that those things are just the vision board. They're just the external representations to get you to the feeling inside of yourself. Are y'all following me? So here's what we do. Okay. And this is hard for people. When you have the example that says, I want a partner who goes to therapy, is spiritual, and does their inner child work, you know that that can't be it. Because how many people do we know who've been in therapy for years and are complete narcissistic a-holes? So it can't be just about therapy, right? It has to be about something deeper than that. And so the question you ask yourself, this is the key. This is the key. What, what I'm going to tell you right now, I need you to pay close attention to, because what I'm going to tell you is how you get to the flip of the feeling. You ask yourself, if I was to be in the presence of my vision and what I want for my life, how would I feel? If I was to be in the presence of my vision and what I want for my life, how would I feel? And so in this example, when you're with a partner who goes to therapy, does whatever it is that is the visual representation in your mind, you drop all that and you say, okay, if I was with a person who was doing those things, I would feel, I feel safe. I feel comfortable and at ease bringing up difficult things when they show up. I feel a sense of openness sharing my vulnerability and my feelings. I feel not, now notice the difference when you try to flip it back on them. I feel like they listen to me. I feel listened to. I feel, that's all still about them. Feeling listened to is just saying you feel like that person listens well. It's about you. How do you feel? So let's go to an example of the job. I'm just giving you some examples. Hopefully they're helpful to help you anchor into this. So somebody says, I'm trying to manifest a new job where I'm making X amount of dollars and that I get to work from home and I you know, have flexibility in my life 
and my coworkers are nice and my boss is somebody who is really fun to work for and I'm doing work that I'm passionate about, X, Y, Z, right? So just reading your comments, y'all are funny. So when you have this job, right? You can have the whole external, you can imagine the office, you could do the whole thing, and that's great, you should do that. But you're only doing that to get you to the feeling. So when you go to the feeling, you stand in the presence of that job. You put yourself in the office, in the job, and you say, okay, if I was in the presence of this vision, how would I feel? And so you're in that job, and I want you all to type in some examples here. You're in that perfect job. How would you feel? So I go, okay, I would feel excited to go to work. I would feel abundant and at peace with my finances. I would feel energized throughout my day. I would feel safe and comfortable speaking to my boss and whoever it is that's around. I feel. And so here you go and you get a job that makes you feel all those things, but because the office don't look like it was supposed to look or because it's not doing the thing that you thought you were supposed to be doing, we let the job go, we let the opportunity pass by because we haven't anchored into the feeling. Here we go. I would feel creative. I would feel accepted. I would feel like I'm walking in my purpose. I would feel motivated. I would feel peace and inspired with my income. I would feel free and creative and connected, valued, ready to share my gifts. Grown. So I'm going to give, I'm going to just show you how easy this is, right? To flip. So Karina, you gave a perfect one here. Connected, inspired is great. Valued is another secondary one. Valued just means, saying I feel valued means I feel like somebody outside of me values me. And so then I feel valued because somebody else is valuing me. So that's putting it outside of yourself. Do you see how easy it is to do that, right? So it's not that you don't want to feel valued. I'm just saying this is not, if we really want to go deep into this teaching, this is, I'm so grateful you said this, and, and I hope you don't mind that I'm giving this edit, Karina, because it's gonna help, it's gonna help everybody. Instead of I feel valued, you go, I feel valuable. I feel purposeful. I feel that I am making a, a meaningful contribution so that you feel valuable in your job. Not other people are valuing you so you feel valued. Do you see the flip? Boop. It's a little flip. It's so easy that we put our vision outside of ourselves. All right? Elmira, this is perfect. So this is, this is how we keep it internal. Thank you, Karina, for that teaching. I was hoping somebody would do something like that so that we can, we can flip it. So, y'all got me? Great. Yeah, Magdalena, this is the same thing. So Magdalena said affirmed. It's the same thing. Mm -mm. Affirmed is somebody else is affirming you, right? So I feel powerful and confident. That's another way to do that, right? <laughs> so this is how we would use this as an example. Okay. So now we're going to go into the vision. And the first time we go into the vision, first time, I just want you to focus on the external. I just want you to focus on the vision and I'll guide you through that. Then we're gonna come out of it, write in a few things, okay? And then we're gonna go back to that same vision and flip to the feeling. And you'll see that this is how you feel your dreams. And then you, I want you, I'll have you write down these feelings so that you can anchor into them and know them. You're gonna write them down somewhere, circle them, put them in your phone so that you know when you're in the presence of your vision. All right? 
I love this. So Kalani just gave up, brought up something before we go into the vision. Kalani said, what about our patterns when we say the dream comes and we say, oh, that's too much work. I, it won't be enough money. I won't be this, I won't be that. For now, all those things can come. For now, just for now, just suspend them. And my desire is that you, just for this, pretend you can rub a magic lamp. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. Anything. What do you notice? There you go, Magdalena. Worthy is the word. That's a good one. All right, everybody. Let's give this a shot. Hands over the center of your chest. This helps release a little oxytocin into the body. Take a deep, full breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale with me for one, two, three. Hold for one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Again, inhale deeply, one, two, three. Hold for one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Last time, inhale deeply for one, two, three. Hold for one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Now just breathe normally. And I want you now to imagine a future version of yourself. At any point in the future, who's living the life of your dreams. And if there was one area of your life that you wished you could take to the next level. Let's focus on living your dream in that area. So whether it's about your relationships or your job or your body or your health or your self-love, confidence, your motivation, your art, your passions, fun, joy, habits, whatever it is for you, money, whatever it is for you, for you. Whatever it is for you, just let one or two areas of life come to focus that you really wish you could take to the next level. And now imagine yourself living fully in the manifestation of that dream. Fully. And I want it to be like you could rub a magic lamp anything is possible, like it would be a miracle if this dream were to have come true. A miracle, that's how far I want you to go. An absolute miracle. There's no point in dreaming a small dream. Just dream a bigger dream. And now in this vision, Remember that some of you will visualize by seeing images in your heads, but some of you won't visualize that way at all. Some of you will visualize or imagine by hearing sounds in your mind or smelling things or tasting things or having a physical sensation come to you, like feeling relaxed or at ease. All of that's part of visualizing. So if when I'm walking you through this, it feels fuzzy or blurry or incomplete or you can't see it all clearly, you're not doing it wrong, don't worry. You're doing it right. So let's begin our imagining. Start by standing in this future and noticing in the vision, are you indoor or are you outdoor in the vision? Just scan around you and notice. Notice if you can sense if there's anybody there with you or if you're alone. And notice what's happening in this vision that indicates to you that you're living the life of your dreams, that something's changed. What's happening, about to happen, already happened. And just notice it. And then take a deep breath in 
and a deep breath out. And right away, write down, you could type them into the chat or write them for yourself. Write down a few things that came to you in your vision, just a few details. So this is us getting the visual representation. It's different for everybody else, everybody. What is the visual representation for you? Take a moment and just write some of those things down. I'll give you just a moment to do that. Last 30 seconds or so just to write some details, colors, things you saw, just so you can remember them. Okay. So we're going to go back into the vision in a moment but this time we're going to anchor into the feeling okay we're going to anchor into the feeling and i love the level of detail that's coming to you all here this is beautiful so as soon as you're ready this will be our final practice for today close your eyes if you're comfortable you can place your palms over your heart, the center of your chest, or just have them down at your sides or on your knees or thighs face up. If you have them down, have your palms face up, but otherwise at your heart. Imagine that grounding cord sending itself all the way down to the earth. Imagine the rose at the edge of your field. You are protected, you are ready. And now imagine and bring back into your awareness this future version of yourself who is living the life of your dreams. Imagining that version of yourself now and if it's the same vision that came to you, fine. If it expands from where it was before, that's fine. But take a moment now as you scan around yourself with the, in the vision. Just scan around yourself. And first notice, do you hear anything in the vision? Are there any sounds associated with this place? If not, don't force it, just notice. Are there any smells associated with it or any tastes associated with it? If not, don't force it. Are there any physical sensations, maybe a temperature or something touching your skin? And then finally, what is the feeling? What is the emotion that you feel in this vision? Feel yourself there. Feel yourself in it. Let it arise. Let the feeling flood you. And just try to go to an emotion, not a physical sensation, but an emotion, a felt sense 
You are listening for the feeling. And now that you've identified the feeling or a few feelings, let yourself feel those feelings. Feel it. Give yourself permission to fully feel it. Even the fantasy of it in this way is useful. And then take a deep breath in, filling yourself up with that feeling and a deep breath out. And again, a deep breath in, filling yourself up with this feeling, this emotion, just fully filling yourself up with it. And a deep breath out. And finally, a deep breath in, filling yourself up with it. And as you exhale, that feeling sustains. And this is how you feel your dream. Go ahead and open your eyes and type in the words that describe your feeling into the chat box. it. And these are, this is the felt sense. This is the felt sense. And Mary Teresa, let me see if I can, I actually, you know, what's funny is I had that idea. Let me see if I could pull something up for you all. Really quick. All right, I'm going to try this. <laughs> <coughs> Give me just a second, y'all. Try something real quick because <clears throat> I know sometimes it's hard to identify the feeling itself so I'm going to try to drop something in here for y'all that you can see so look I'm pulling up this feelings wheel here for you make myself a little smaller so this is called the feelings wheel feeling wheel by Gloria Wilcox I'm just gonna shrink I'm trying to shrink myself there we go now see if any of these words we'll go to this bottom row help you describe the feeling a little more I'll keep this on the screen for about 20 more seconds. And you could see some of these words, peaceful, relaxed, thoughtful, intimate, trusting, sentimental, confident, intelligent, worthwhile, hopeful, valuable, satisfied, proud, respected, aware, playful, energetic, sexy, fascinating, stimulating. So see if this wheel, I'd love for you to type in some words that helps, that help. And then you wanna write these down. Don't think you're gonna remember them because you ain't. You're gonna wanna write these down. <clears throat> okay. 
All right, y'all. So this is how we feel our feelings. <laughs> this is how we feel our feelings. And this is the power of us connecting into our dreams. And when you can get that sense, I feel satisfied, content, I feel serene and confident, I feel playful, I feel delightful, I feel cheerful. That's how you start to know when you're in the presence of your dream. And this is how we manifest going forward. So if anybody needs that wheel, you can Google, there's many versions of it, Feelings Wheel, Feeling Wheel by Gloria Wilcox. Uh, that's the version that I like to use, but there's several other versions as well. And I hope that this now helps you get a greater understanding of how to step into the power of your vision and to know when your vision is in your presence because oftentimes it's right there dangling itself in front of us and we don't even see it. I love you all so much. I hope today's lesson and teaching anchored you into your hearts. Let us take a moment now and do our golden nugget practice, which is one of my favorite practices for us to make sure that we're doing. And your golden nugget practice is a practice that will allow you to take one key takeaway from today's session and drop into it and anchor into it as your main teaching because we did cover a lot today. So right now, go ahead and place your hands over the center of your chest. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And if you could think of one key takeaway, one golden nugget from today's session, what would that key takeaway be? What would that key takeaway be? And this will be the way that you anchor into these teachings. And then you make a promise that you take these teachings into your life. And my offer to you, my ask of you, is that today, today, literally it could be right after we get off of this, or any time later today, you share your golden nugget, something you learned with somebody in your life whether it's about posting about it online or just talking to a friend later today, this is how we become ripples of change out into the world and how we bring our gifts out into the world so we're not the only ones receiving these teachings here at the kingdom, but that we all become the ripples of change. So go ahead and type your golden nugget into the chat box. I see you're all are already doing that. Y'all know what to do here. And I love you endlessly and dearly. And don't forget to blow up your roses tonight, okay? Let us close out with our closing blessing. God, spirit, universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for helping to bring our visions to life. Thank you for helping us remember that it's more about what it feels like and not just what it looks like and that we can use what it looks like as a gift, as a gift to anchor us back into the feeling that is our rightful place to be taking in this journey that we call life on this planet at this time and right now. Thank you, Great Spirit, for bringing us together. Thank you for these lessons. Thank you for them passing through me in the way that they do. I am so grateful. And may we forever remember that we are the living manifestation of all the ancestors that came before us and all the people that will be forever yellow in our minds and in our hearts. May we continue to bring their legacy forward through our legacy until we become the ancestors of this time. Thank you, Great Spirit, for bringing this community together. This is the kingdom where we rise together. So it is, Ashe, Aho, Salam, Amen, Satnam, Awen, Om, Shanti Om. Thank you. So it is. And uh, I will just put a quick plug here for Mariana and community here. Mariana has started the Kingdom Book Club. The session is on September 11th. 
Mariana, if you put the link for everybody in the chat box, they will uh, be able to go and sign up and, and get the info for anybody who wants to join the book club. I love you all so much. We rise together and I'll meet you right here in this special place in a couple weeks. Bye for now. Love you all.